Hey, welcome back. Uh, today I'm here with Jacqueline, and Ollie's sticking his butt in the video too. But um, uh, this is her. Uh, Jacqueline is on YouTube as Action Jacqueline, and you can also find her on Instagram. She has a website, Action Jacqueline on Instagram. Your website, what is that one? It's actionjacqueline.com, and it's all about yoga and working out, healthy recipes, healthy living. It's amazing, if I may say so. Awesome. <laughs> cool. the, the, the way I started, I actually started following uh, Jacqueline at first on Instagram because um, often in yoga, so many poses are done with poor alignment, and she would post these really great pictures of the common misalignments in the pose, and then the proper alignment in the pose with different action arrows. Which, is that how you get the name Action Jacqueline? Actually, no, but no. that's a kind of a cool correlation I never thought about. <laughs> Let's just pretend that it's not right. But, okay, so. Yeah, that's exactly, I had it all planned out and figured out, yeah. Yeah, so but. it's like, it's the way, it's kind of like one of the ways that I learned to teach is that in the Anger Method, we learn all these different actions and the poses. Mm -hmm. So she shows those in the picture. So it's so cool. Check that out and also check out her YouTube channel. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, so she's going to be um, demonstrating the poses today while I'll, I teach. And today we're going to begin in child's pose. Oh, so nice. take child's pose, give yourself a moment to get centered. And as usual, we have um, blocks handy if you need blocks for your standing poses or whatever. We'll have that as an option. So just take a few moments here to get grounded and centered. Let yourself shift gears from whatever is going on. And often I like to start off with poses like this with your head down because it kind of gives you this opportunity to go inward. So much of our day, we're, as soon as we wake up, maybe you're pulled out onto the screen, emails, texts, uh, Instagrams, whatever you got going on, and right away we're pulled right out. So in our yoga practice, it's our time to go back in to restore and kind of just check out things from the inside. So now stretch your arms all the way forward and as you let your hips release back and down onto your heels, create space with your breath through your side ribs. Then as you inhale, come up onto your hands and your knees. Good. And we're just going to do a little warm up for our core first, our shoulders and our hips. And we'll start off with a little bit of cat-cow. As you exhale, round your back and look back at your navel. And as you inhale, arch your back, wheel your chest forward. Tip your sit bones up. Two more times, just move with your breath now. Exhale to round your back. Inhale to wheel the chest forward. And last one. All right, then come into a neutral spine and practice holding your neutral, keeping your hips level, stretch your right leg back behind you. Then send your left arm forward. When your left arm goes forward, your ribs will want to twist. Try not to let them. Keep the ribs level to the floor. Rotate the arm externally. Turn the inner arm up to the ceiling, the tricep down, and also inject the inner arm bone back into the socket as you're stretching through the muscles long. Then lower your hand and your knee back down and change sides, going nice and slow for the first round. First, just stretch the left leg back, then send your right arm forward. As the arm goes forward, the upper trap's gonna wanna hold the arm, so instead, turn the tricep down, move the inner arm bone back into the socket so you feel the upper trap release, and then feel your muscles turn on, reach past your fingers. Lower your hand and your knee down. Good, then inhale, change sides, and one smooth movement, stretch the leg and the arm, yeah, and see if you can lift the foot up off the floor without your belly dropping. Exhale, lower back down. Inhale, change sides. Exhale, lower back down. Inhale, change sides. Exhale, lower down. Last one. Inhale, change sides. And exhale, lower down. Good, then let's come into plank and start to wake up our core in that position. So in plank pose, have your hands right underneath your shoulders, press down into your middle three knuckles and into your fingerprints, and be light through the wrist so that your back muscles turn on instead of just hanging into your shoulders, into your wrists. Lift up your belly and energize your legs. 
Hold here. Three more breaths. Squeeze the legs, lift up your belly, but now spread wide across your collarbones, open up across your chest. Good job. Then stretch back to downward facing dog. Good. And practice that same rotation with your arms that you're practicing in that hand and knee stretch. So as you press down even into your hands, rotate from the triceps down, the biceps spin up. And then start to lift from your hips up and away from your wrists. Then walk your feet forward to the front of your mat and fold forward Uttanasana. You can bend your knees as much as you need to so that your spine lengthens. If your hamstrings are more flexible though, you might not need to bend the knees. All right, then bring your hands onto your outer hips and come all the way up to stand. Let's do a few sun salutations now. So from the front of your mat, join your palms together and with your eyes closed, take a slow, steady breath in through your nose. And let it out. Drop your arms down at your side, open your eyes. Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, Ardha, flat back, elongate your spine. Step back one leg at a time into plank pose. So a little slower for this first round. Then shift forward and lower slowly, keeping the chest expanded, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Cobra is always an option if it feels better for your lower back until you start to warm up. Down dog, stretch back. Good, hold in your dog. Give yourself an opportunity to reconnect to your breath. Then look between your hands. Step, walk, or hop up to the top of your mat. Inhale, Ardha, flat back, lengthen. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come all the way up, raise your arms up. Exhale, Samastiti. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, Ardha, flat back, lengthen. Step back and lower slowly to Chaturanga. And one smooth movement if you can. Inhale, up dog. Roll the shoulder heads back so the collarbones are broad. Exhale, down dog, stretch back. All right, then from down dog, as you press evenly into your hands, we're gonna to try to mimic that same motion that we did on the hands and knees, except it's a little more challenging to stay even in this position. So now raise your right leg up behind you without your hips twisting open to the right. Stay even as you can on your hands. Stretch through that leg, reach and make a long mountain pose line from your wrist to your ankles. Ankle, then shift into plank pose and pull your knee up into your chest. Lift your knee up high as you push the floor down, pull your belly up. And then as light as you can, step your foot up by your right thumb. Good. Come into a lunge here. Then come up onto your fingertips and start to spread your collarbones and reach your chest forward. And as you hold in this position, reach both of your sit bones straight back behind you as the heart reaches forward. Good, then come on up into crescent. Lift from your belly, come up, stretch the arms up. And on your back leg, as you root through your big toe mound, second toe mound spot, Start to lift the back inner thigh. At the same time, make sure that you're not sinking to your lower back. So lift your back ribs up off of your butt. Good, then bring your hands back down to the mat. Step back to plank pose. Hold strong in your plank. All right, now let's challenge your core strength here. As you hold in the plank, lift your right leg up just an inch without your hips twisting. Good, then change legs, lift the left leg up an inch. Set that foot down and stretch right back to down dog. Good job. 
All right, even on your hands, raise your left leg up from the inner thigh. Try not to let your hips twist. Good, roll the left inner thigh up to the ceiling and reach long through the inner foot. Exhale, shift into plank, pull your knee up into your chest. Round out your back, push the floor down with your hands, spread your shoulder blades on your back. Then as light as you can, step your foot all the way up by your thumb. Inhale, come up on your fingertips, elongate. And take a moment here just to create length for your lumbar spine. So as you reach back evenly through your sit bones, you'll feel the sides of your lower back elongate. Reach your heart forward. Settle into the lunge. Let the hips start to open. And then as you inhale, lift from your middle. Come on up. Raise your arms up into crescent. Good. And as you root down into that space between your big toe mount and second toe mount on your back foot, lift the back inner thigh and lift through all four sides of your waist at the same time. Keeping the lift through the waist. See maybe if you can lunge a little bit deeper into the front of your left heel. Breathe through your nose. Bring your hands back down to the mat. Step back, plank pose. All right, it's the plank challenge again. Here we go. Stay even on the hands. Lift your left leg up just one inch without twisting your hips. Strong core. Good, blade still on your back. Change legs, raise the right leg up an inch. Oh, don't let those shoulder blades sneak up. Keep them pulled onto your back. Chest open still. Set that foot down. Lift your belly. Good, stretch back to downward facing dog. Okay. Walk your feet all the way up to the front of your mat. And let your head drop. Then sit back for chair pose. Nice, as you hold in your chair, feel the center of your heels weight, the inner ankles lift, and then again, feel all four sides of your waist grow tall. Good, come all the way up to stand, keep your arms up for this one, Urdhva Hastasana, and bring your hands to your heart, Samastiti. Good, sun salute B, let's do it one time. Inhale into chair pose, bend your knees and sit back. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back, lengthen. Step back and lower to chaturanga. Remember, you can always skip the vinyasa and just go back to downward facing dog if it's too much on your shoulder or your lower back to do the up dog. From down dog, step your right foot up to your right thumb. Turn your back heel down on its side for warrior one. Lift from your belly, come right up through the midline. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Step your left foot, warrior one. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Good, hold in your dog. Okay, let's try one other action in the down dog. So you have the length in the spine, even if you have to bend the knees, that's okay. And as you reach down into your, into your toe mounds, start to plug from your thigh bones, from your inner thighs, up into the hip sockets, like you got lifted, pulled up and back from the thighs. You can even do this action with your knees bent. So it's more of an energetic thing. All right, then from down dog, step your right foot for warrior two. So step the right foot right in between your hands, turn your back heel down and then come on up into Vira two. So it's real basic alignment here. Your right knee, your left foot is turned in a little bit to protect your back knee and hip. And as you turn your right thigh all the way out so that your knee points straight ahead, grow tall through the sides of your waist so that you're not sinking into your lower back. Balance your head right up on top of your spine and then start to expand and spread from your collarbones all the way out through your index fingers. Stay steady on your feet. Reconnect your breath. Good, then from warrior two, let's go into extended side angle pose. 
<laughs> nice. <laughs> Take your right forearm down onto your thigh and reach your left arm overhead. If you want to do a little reverse warrior before, that's cool too. Just get a little expansion on the side. Okay, cool. So as you connect into this back heel bone, turn that right thigh out again. It'll want to sneak in. So keep it turned out so it points straight ahead. Not on Jacqueline, because she's got all the actions down already. But for, for me, maybe for you, I always have to remind that thigh to turn out. It always wants to sneak in on me. Okay, cool. Then come back up to warrior two. Strong arms, energize the arms. Then vinyasa, bring your hands to the mat, step back. Remember, you can just step right back to down dog instead if you need to conserve your energy. Good job. Then step your left foot, warrior two. Steady through your feet. So we've been talking about this a lot. It's just as important how you hold the pose as your transition. So you'll notice how graceful Jacqueline comes in and out of these poses. So you want to focus on this really important. And we've been learning how to move from your core as we move through these positions. So your back foot's angled in a little bit, the left thigh turns out. Breathe the spine tall, head right up on top, and open your chest through the reach of your fingers. Good. Then from here, maybe you can let your left thigh drop a little bit deeper, as long as your lumbar spine stays tall. Then go into extended side angle, take your forearm onto your thigh, reach your right arm all the way over, and as you reconnect into the back heel, We'll reincorporate that action from the beginning with the arm. Turn the tricep down towards the floor and let the inner arm release so that the upper trap isn't yanked up. Then lengthen yourself, get as long as you can through this line of your back ankle. Lift from the belly up to the chest. And as you press down evenly into your feet, inhale, come back up to warrior two, nice and smooth. Nice. Hands to the mat. Step back to down dog or out of vinyasa if you like your call. Good. Then look in between your hands. Step or hop up to the top of your mat. Inhale, flat back. Lengthen. Exhale, fold forward. Press down through your feet. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale the hands to your heart. Then let's step the right foot back for triangle. So step your right foot back about four feet, then spread your arms out to the side. If you have long legs like me, maybe four feet. Then turn your left toes in, turn your right leg all the way out. So we're gonna do the pose over the right leg first, and then start to tip from your pelvis, reach out over your right leg, Uthita Trikonasana. Oh yeah. Yeah, remember, blocks, it doesn't mean that you're um, less flexible. In fact, it's all about proportion. So a block can help you to access the pose better. Remember, always feel free to use a block. So make sure that your right thigh is turned so that your knee points straight ahead. And as you reach down through your right hand, reach your chest away from your hips and then see if you can start to turn. Press down through your feet. Inhale, come back up and turn your feet to the other side. And as you exhale, reach out over your left leg for triangle pose. Nice, so the left leg is like it's doing mountain pose facing the front wall now. Center ankle, knee, hip, all pointing straight ahead. And as you stretch through your back leg, lengthen through the sides of your trunk, reach your chest away from your hips and then see if you can start to turn the chest up. So most commonly, misalignment I see in this one is that before people get the extension, the length in the spine, is that they're trying to yank their chest up to the ceiling. First comes the length, then you add the twist and triangle. Reach down through your feet, and as you inhale, come back up to stand. Now turn your left toes in so your feet are parallel. Clasp your hands behind your back, and turn your shoulder heads back so you feel your blades come onto your back. Then as you exhale, fold forward in between your legs, prasari to see. Keep all of your toes pointing straight ahead and let the hips start to balance over the heels. 
So remember in down dog when we were working on pulling your thighs up? So as you stretch evenly into your feet, start to draw the inner thighs up. And as you do that, see if you can let the sides of the spine lengthen even more. Good. Press down through your feet and come back up to stand. Then turn your left foot out. Step up to the top of your mat. All right. So last week I mentioned that we were going to work up through flow to doing like a little more advanced variation of going into Warrior 3. So we're going to try that now. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. I love Warrior 3. Oh, me too. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> All right. So from Mountain, we'll take a little vinyasa. Inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Step back to dog or take a vinyasa, your call. Then from down dog, step your right foot for crescent again. Step your right foot up to your right thumb and raise your arms up, keeping your back heel upright. Good, so feel that you're steady on your right leg. Then bring your arms to your side and start to lean your chest out over your knee. Keep your shoulder blades on your back. The tendency will be for the shoulders to start to round and the chest to collapse. So keep all, yeah, good, keep all, thanks for showing that. Don't, geez, that was a lot. Okay, so keep the chest open. Keep the back muscles turned on and the spine long. Then step right up to balance on your right leg. Nice. Now lift that back thigh bone up until your leg is level with your hips. Level the hips and the waist to the floor, just like we practiced on that hand and knee stretch at the beginning. Turn the shoulder blades on the back. Good, and keep breathing length through your spine. Oops. Then as smooth as you can, bend your right knee and take a big step back into warrior one. Lift your belly, raise your arms up. Now let's do the full expression of warrior one. Lift your chest, look up, and join your palms together. Nice. Then hands back to the mat. Step back, down dog, or out of vinyasa, your call. Step your left foot for crescent. Inhale, raise your arms up. Good. Then drop your arms to your side. So we've also prepped through the, for this work through the movement video that you practiced earlier this week. Keeping the blades on your back, start to lean your chest out over your knee. Good. Feel that your chest stays open as you go, so your core is supporting you. And then as smooth as you can, lean into that left foot and step up. Level the hip bones to the floor and raise your back leg up to hip height. Good, hold there. Find the mountain pose line from your back ankle all the way out through your crown. Three more breaths. Okay, then bend your knee in as smooth as you can. Take a big step back. Good, raise your arms up, full expression now. Lift your chest, look up, and join the palms together. Good, hands back to the mat, step back to down dog or out of vinyasa, your call. All right, one more little practice of balance from this crescent position, we'll go for a crescent twist. So step your right foot again and inhale, come up into crescent. Then bring your hands to your heart and start to lean your chest out over your knee. So before you go into the twist, just feel that you're able to hold that length. Then bring your left elbow to your knee. And most commonly in this pose, as I'll see that people round over because it kind of feels like you're deeper in the twist, maybe if you're rounded over. But instead, I want you to lengthen straight out through the midline, like I drew a line down the middle of your mat and you're lengthening your spine through that line. As you find that length, then start to spin from your belly up towards your right shoulder. Your right hip stays tracking with your right ankle.
This is a tough one. <laughs> bring your hands. How long is it going to make me hold it? Just another two minutes. Okay, bring your hands back down to the mat. Step back to down dog or take a vinyasa. <laughs> Yeah, the holds are always longer when I'm not doing them. Okay, let's step your left foot for crescent. Inhale, come up. Oh. Yeah. Then bring your hands to prayer position. Good, steady on that left heel. Start to lean your chest forward without rounding. So that takes all that strength that we've been building in our core that I've been talking about. Then hook your elbow to your knee. Once the elbow hooks, again, there's a tendency to round to get the elbow to hook, so find your length. Awesome, just like that. And then once you have all the length, then we'll add a little bit more twist, but you're already in a deep twist to get that elbow over there, so it's not like you have to try to crank yourself very hard. Good, just three more breaths. <laughs> All right, hands back down to the mat. Step back to down dog or out of vinyasa if you like, your call. Okay, cool. Then back to child's pose. Set your knees down, just like how we started. Take a few, few moments here to reconnect to your breath. All right, next we're gonna do the foundation work for Shirshasan. So we're gonna build strength in our shoulders and our core through dolphin. Okay. All right, so in this position, on your hands and your knees, you bring your elbows down onto the mat with your hands interlocked. Notice that the elbows align right underneath the center of the shoulder. Then once you interlock your hands, press down through your forearms, curl your toes under, and lift your knees, lift your hips up. Good. So in this position, see if you can walk your feet in a little bit closer without your upper back rounding. So just pretend like I had my knee in your upper back as you walk in. Then from the thighs, just like we practiced in down dog, plug those inner thighs up. They don't even have to be straight. It's just an action to help to lift the hips up. Starting from the inner knees, lift up, and feel that your core muscles are turned on to help to support you here as you press down through your forearms. Move your inner blades out of your ears. Okay, nice. Now without the hips twisting, can you raise your right leg up from the inner thigh? Nice. You got it. Keep plugging that left inner thigh up at the same time. Change legs. Raise the left leg up. Try not to let those hips twist. Plug that right inner thigh up. Good. Lower that leg back down. And now walk into plank on your forearms and hold that for three minutes. No, just hold, hold that for five breaths. If your shoulders feel spent, just come down and take a breath and then go back into it. Good, so feel those toe, big toe mound root, second toe mound spot root down, inner thighs up, legs strong, then lift up your belly and spread those collarbones from the center of your chest all the way to the tips of the shoulders. And hold for the last five, Four, three, two, almost there. One, Sphinx pose. Good job, set your hips down. Let your chest up. <laughs> All right, good. Okay, cool. So today let's do, we've been working on doing the low lunge and reaching back and grabbing the foot. So today let's work on going, it's kind of like a hybrid of camel and virasana. So let's come on to the knees. And if, you're, if you have a knee situation and it's too much for you to sit like this, then you could just do the low lunge instead. But otherwise, walk your hands, uh, take your feet just wide enough for your buns to fit in between. And you can put a block there if you need to. But otherwise, walk the hands a foot behind you. And then turn your shoulders back and open up your chest. Then from this position, lift your hips up and start to stretch from the front of your hip down into the tops of the knees. Like you're trying to root the knees down into the mat. Good, so as you keep rooting through the fronts of the knees, lift from your belly up to your chest, 
almost like you're trying to create more space from right here from the front of your hip through your belly. So you're stretching through your psoas, turn the shoulders open and keep reaching through the knees. Good, then lower your hips back down. I feel good. That's, a, that's one of my favorite stretches. That's good. So the way to build up the flexibility for that is all through that low lunge we've been practicing. Okay, now come onto your belly. And clasp your hands behind your back. First, draw your shoulder blades onto your back, wake up your back muscles. Then lift your shoulders, head, chest, legs up. So we're not gonna hold a long Shalabhasana today. Instead, we're gonna go right to the prep for Dhanurasana. So bend your knees and bring your heels towards your hands. Now, if you feel like, oh, my feet are right there and I could just grab them, go ahead and grab your feet. But if you're not, don't have the flexibility yet, you don't have to like crank yourself to grab your feet. Once you have your feet, if you can lift your shins and reach the shins back a bit to take you deeper into the back bend, go ahead. Two more breaths. Good, great job. Slowly come back down from that and just let one cheek rest on the mat. All right, then stretch back to down dog and let your spine neutralize from the back bends. All right, and then from down dog, make your way to seated. Sit in Dandasana. All right, so in Dandasana, bring your hands next to your hips and from the back of the spine, from the sacrum, start to go in and up. Let the shoulder heads roll back. Let the chest expand. And make sure that your legs aren't turned out. Your knees point straight up, all 10 toes point straight up. Then from that position, we're gonna kinda do like a hybrid Marichyasan, uh, Ardhamasyandrasan. So bend your right knee and cross your right ankle onto the outside of your left knee. Then wrap your left elbow around your knee and twist to your right. So this is a great way to release the spine after the back bends with a little twist. Also it helps to relieve the tension in your outer hip. So from all that like balancing on your leg in warrior three, this is just help, gonna help to keep your glute need healthy. We want it to be able to fire, to be strong when it's called for that, but we also want it to be flexible. Remember the health of a muscle is the ability to contract fully and to release all the way. Take one more deep breath here and then come back to center. Good, stretch that leg out and change legs. Bring your left knee in and cross it on the outside. Wrap your right arm around. And just like we practiced in the standing twist, get your length first, and then see if you can turn a little bit deeper. Remember, just to get all the way back there, you're in a pretty deep twist, so it's not like you have to try to crank yourself. And then come back to center. Good. Stretch both legs straight out. And then from here, cross your legs in front of you and fold forward. If you like, you can rest your head on a block or if it goes all the way to the floor, if you have the flexibility to, that's fine. I usually have to put like three chairs in front of me to get the head to rest onto something. But go to a spot that feels comfortable. We'll introduce a little bit of uh, forward flexion for the spine. Create space with your breath. And let the whole back of the spine feels like it, feel like it participates even in the forward movement opens up even. Then inhale, come back up. Change the cross of your legs. And again, go forward. Inhale, come back up. 
and lie down onto your back for course pose. Shavasana. <laughs> Alright, so set yourself up however it feels comfortable. Maybe feet a little bit wider than hip distance apart. Hands next to your side, palms face up. Close your eyes. And anywhere in your body where it feels like the body is resisting gravity, just let it go, let it drop into the floor. And with each exhalation, let your awareness sink a little bit deeper in. And gently bend your knees. Roll over to your right side. And press yourself up to seated. All right, so sit up tall for a moment with your eyes closed. And just notice the shift that comes at the end of your practice. How good it feels to take in that time from being pulled out by the senses and just go in, restore, give back to yourself. Bring your palms together. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. All right. Thanks for watching today. Thanks to Jacqueline for coming out. Make sure to check her out on YouTube. Also follow her on Instagram, Action Jacqueline. And uh, if you enjoyed the video today, Make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, let me know what you thought, any questions, comments, suggestions you got for us, and uh, also subscribe if you haven't already. Thank All right. you so much for class. Yeah, that thanks was for amazing. coming. amazing. That felt so good. <laughs> <laughs> I had to pay her to say that. All right, guys, we'll see, see you, you next soon. time. Bye.